All right, Shalom. I'm going to start off with giving all praise and honor and glory to Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh Shai, Bashem, Yahweh Kakadash, the bonus of the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, peace and citations to the hopeful elect. And I came across this article, you know, just scrolling on Instagram, you know, and I thought it was interesting for me to expound on it real quick, real fast and, uh, you know, bring out a few scriptures. Okay, so as, you know, as she's saying, Erica Liche. It says, don't let this sudden display of fake concern for black lives excite you. This country is like a man that beats you, then brings you flowers. And, you know, she's exactly right. OK, because Esau Edom, which is the so-called white man, which is the devil, according to the Bible, which is the which is an enemy of you so-called Negroes, Latinos and Native Americans, you Israelites. All right. This is how he operates. OK, he's pushing forth this energy as if he's with you. OK, as if, you know, he doesn't want anything to happen to you, you know, that he's really for you, so to speak. Now, let's get a scripture. Now, when you go into this scripture right here. OK. The book of Revelation 13. Book of Revelation 13, verse 11, it says, And I beheld another, Salakia says, And beheld, and I beheld another beast coming out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. Okay, now we know this goes into, you know, America's political parties, okay? The Democrats. And the Republicans, right? And both of those same parties are carrying out the same agenda, all right? Now, they play as their two opposing forces, but they're really not, okay? Because they're really working for the same elite, okay? The banking families, right? So it says, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon, Okay? Because that's how this devil speaks. All right? This is how this devil speaks. He speaks as a dragon. Okay? Now, when you go into a dragon, right, it can also be known as a serpent. <laughs> it says, a dragon, a great serpent, a name for Satan, which just goes into Esau Edom. Okay? This goes into Esau Edom because we know Esau Edom is a serpent. Right? We know Esau Edom is a, is a crafty individual uh, uh hey it told you he's he's more subtile than that and then everyone on the earth roughly paraphrasing so it says and i beheld another beast coming out of the earth and he had two horns like a lamb and he spake as a dragon you see so he acts as if he's on your side and as he's with you but really his heart and his mind is set against you really in his mind he is plotting on how he can what overthrow you. You see, and this is what a lot of our people do not understand, these characteristics of Esau Edom. Okay, let's see if I can... Hmm. Okay, well, let's get this one. It says, Psalms 140, verse 1, it says, To the chief musician... A psalm of David, deliver me, O the Lord, O Lord, from the evil man. Preserve me from the violent man. And Esau, all Esau knows what? He's a he's a thief. Okay, all he knows to do is to come to kill, steal, and destroy. Which imagine mischiefs in their heart continually are they gathered for together for war. They have sharpened their tongues like a serpent. Adder's poison is under their lips. Salah. Keep me, O Lord, from the hands of the wicked. Preserve me from the violent man who have purpose to overthrow my goings. You see? And this is how we got this is how we gotta be. We gotta be uh in the spirit, in a praying spirit, you know, for to we gotta be in that spirit, you know, asking the Heavenly Father, may He cover us, may He protect us, okay, may He take care of us and deliver us from who? Esau Edom, the wicked. The wicked who what? The wicked whose purpose is to overthrow our goings as the Israelites. 
You see? Because when you go even go into the book of Psalms 83, the book of Psalms 83, verse 1, it says, uh, I'll start at verse 2, it says, For lo, thine enemies make a tumult. They, they that hate thee have lifted up thy head, the head. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people and consulted against thy hidden ones. And the hidden ones are who? The Israelites. Okay? And they have came together, right? They have came together, which is the other nations, have came together, right, as one to consult against us. You see, to plot on how to, what? To destroy us as a people, as a nation. Right? And they have said, come, let us cut them off from being a nation that the name of Israel be no more in remembrance. For they have consulted together with one consent. They are confederate against thee, the tabernacles of Edom. Right. And this is the so-called white man. And you can continue down. And it speaks about the other nations. OK, all these nations have came, have came against us. Right. And have the same plot and agenda to what destroy us as a nation to keep us down. Right? So I'm going to go back to the young lady's post. I don't even have it on there. So, matter of fact, <laughs> it's a good thing I saved it. Here we go. So I'll read it again. It says, don't let this sudden display of fake concern for black lives excite you. This country is like a man that beats you, then brings you flowers. Right. And that's the, at the narrative where that's the characteristics of Esau. You see? Esau, like Esau will bring drugs into the country, bring guns into the country. Right. But then give it to Jake to watch Jake destroy to destroy themselves. And the scripture says, uh, woe, uh, woe to the man that give his neighbor uh, a neighbor drink. You see? And that's Esau, man. You see, Esau will give you things to further help you destroy yourself. You see? And then come out of nowhere and, 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 try to, and try to say, you know what? Let us come in and let us make things better. Meanwhile, he's the perpetrator and, and the one who is responsible of the conditions of the people of uh, uh, the reason why their community or the reason why their neighborhood is the way it is. So she's right when she said this. This country is like a man that beats you, then brings you flowers. You see? Because they play both sides. You see? And it also was another word they call it, order out of chaos. Okay? They create order out of chaos. You see? Like I said, they bring drugs and guns and everything to what? To, to Jake's neighborhood. And then they come in with the suite with the police and say, Let's come, let us come and clean this up. Right? Like they wanted the ones behind it. It says, the only option is to separate ourselves from dependency on them. Now, when you go into this, go into economics, right? Esau Edom doesn't want Jake to have ownership, all right? That's what he doesn't want, you see? And that's a part of the reason why uh, one of the main reasons Martin Luther King got killed as well, you see? Because he tried to go into teaching our people to have ownership, okay? Economics. And Esau Edom doesn't want that. You see, Esau Edom wants to continue to benefit off you Israelites as much as he can. Because when you think about, you know, the big spenders of the country or the big spenders, right? Who is it? It's Jake. Even though Jake is the most uh, in poverty, Jake spends the most. You see? And I forget what that, that word is actually called. So it says the only option is to separate ourselves from dependency on them. OK, but what all people don't know is, according to the curses of the scriptures, what does it say? It says we will be dependent upon them. Let's go to the book of Deuteronomy 28, verse. Um, let's see. It's like uh, bear with me for a second. Right, so when you go into the scriptures, it tell you that that basically we, that we will be what have to go to Esau for the want of all things. Right. Oh yeah, here we go. Deuteronomy twenty-eight verse uh, forty-eight. It says, 
Therefore thou shalt serve thine enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee, in hunger, and in thirst, and in nakedness, and in the want of all things. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee. You see? So, right, you, you have here, right, the, the go separate from uh, our oppressor, right? So we wouldn't be dependent upon them, but not knowing, according to the curses, that that was a part of our punishment, okay? Also a part of our punishment that what? Esau, Edom will be the head and we shall be the tail, that we will be on bottom, okay? And so what Jake doesn't understand is Jake has this mindset of, you know, let's separate from them, right? And let's start our own communities and do our own thing again, right? Which that will destroy Esau, right? But at the end of the day, right, I mean, it will destroy Esau to a minimum because they're about to make everything digital. So currency is not about to mean a damn thing, all right? They're about to have everything on the, uh, the, the RFID microchip, which is the mark of the beast. But the point is, I want to say that, you know, building up communities and doing all that is not going to work because it wasn't set up for us to work or, or it's like it wasn't set up, set up for us to prosper in this place. You see, it wasn't set up for us to prosper. All right. Uh, Deuteronomy 28 verse 44 says, I start at verse 43. It says, the stranger that is within thee shall get up above thee very high and thou shall come down very low. And he, he shall lend to thee, and thou shall not lend to him. Right? Our people don't got nothing to lend to lend to them. Esau does all the lending. Right? And what do Jake do? Jake, we do all the borrowing. So we are the ones that's more up in debt. Right? Which which interest and all that, that that's wicked. According to the scriptures, you're not even supposed to put on interest on anything. Whatever someone, uh, whatever you borrow someone, borrow from someone, you're supposed to give that exact thing back. No interest is supposed to be added, but this is what happens when you're dealing with Esau, Edom. It says, he shall lend to thee, and thou shall not lend to him. He shall be the head, and thou shall be the tail. You see that? So this is what happened upon us. Moreover, all these curses shall come upon thee, and shall pursue thee, and overtake thee, till thou be destroyed. Because thou hearkenest not unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to keep his commandments and his statutes which he commanded thee. And they shall be upon thee for a sign and a wonder and upon thy seed forever. You see? So Jake want to know why these things are happening unto us, right? Why we're on the bottom, why we're in the ghettos, why we're the, uh, the last hired, the first fired, right? Why we're getting gunned down and shredded down like the mire in the streets, okay? Why are our, our women uh, carry themselves as harlots? Why are young men stand on the, uh, the streets, uh, uh, as as uh, on the corners as wild bulls, you see why Jake is just totally destroyed, mentally, physically, and spiritually, right? Because these curses have befallen us before the, for the disobedience unto the Lord. You see, so even what you trying to create, you know, a, a new black uh, community, trying to create a new black Wall Street, it's not going to work. You see, because why didn't uh, Black Wall Street uh, continue to be successful? Because it wasn't set up for Jake to be successful. Okay? Look up uh, Black Wall Street, uh, Tulsa, Oklahoma in 1921. Jake was thriving in wealth. Everything black owned. But what happened? Esau Edom burned it to the ground. You see? But at the end of the day... That was supposed to happen. Why? Because the Lord told us that we wasn't going to prosper in this land. Because we were brought here to be, uh, this, we were brought here to America, Babylon the Great, for, an, for a punishment. You see, it was a punishment for us to be brought, brought here. Okay, same with uh, 1923, Rosewood. All right? Which happened down in Florida. What happened? Another uh, a, a thriving a black community. Right? What happened? Esau burned it to the ground, you see? But after the end of the day, it goes back to those curses because the Lord told us that we wouldn't prosper. Deuteronomy 28, verse 29, And thou shalt grope at noonday as the blind grope up in darkness, and thou shalt not prosper in thy ways. And thou shalt not prosper in thy ways, and thou shalt be only oppressed and spoiled evermore, and no man shall save thee. See, so no one's going to be able to get you out of that condition that you are in. 
You see, no one. And even though we did thrive for a little bit, okay, it still got brought down because the Lord told us that we wasn't going to prosper. You see? You wasn't put here in America, Babylon the Great, to, 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 to be rest, to, uh, to rest, you see? To be successful. That wasn't the I. It, it, you wasn't brought here for that. Let's go to the book of... Uh, And um and then don't bring up and don't people don't try to come on a comment board and bring up these celebrities and things like that because they're oppressed too. You see? Their their money is monitored. Everything they do is monitored. They can't even be themselves. They can't even speak out uh for when causes and certain things happen to their people. You see? Or or what would happen? Esau would take all that. You see? If you, if you don't get down and lay down and if you don't push Esau's agenda. Right? This is what he uses our people for to fulfill his agenda. If you're not doing that, right, Esau will strip you bare of everything that you do have. So don't get it twisted. Baruch 4 verse 6 it says, You were sold to the nations, not for your destruction, but because you moved the most high to wrath. You were delivered to your enemies. You see? So this is what happened. This is why we were sold to the nations. Okay? And this is what we are here, majority of us, are here in America, Babylon, the Great. Okay, and also you rest of the Israelites, you are, you are scattered. You're not in your homelands, but you're in captivity, you see? And even a few, few of the Israelites that may be still, that's still in our homeland, they still oppressed because they don't own anything. You see? They don't own anything. So, let's see if there's any more on that. So here we go. So it says, the only option is to separate ourselves from dependency on them. We must build communities of our own, support our own, love our own. You see? And we have already tried that. We have already did that. But yet, our people still haven't tried to what? Return to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. That's what they haven't tried. You see? Because we are supposed to be separate. We are supposed to be a separate people. Why? Because the Lord made us holy. You see, Deuteronomy 7 verse 6 says, For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God have chosen thee to be a special people unto himself above all people that are upon the face of the earth. So the Lord does want to separate it. Okay? He separated us to be his holy people. And meaning, with us being a holy people, we have to carry and conduct ourselves in a way that he wants us to conduct ourselves. You see? Via the law, statutes, and commandments. This is what sets us apart from the other nations. Because the other nations, they don't have no guidelines and instructions that, and rules that they follow by. But we do. You see? We, we have the guidelines. We have the instruction book. Which is the Bible. Okay? Which is the Holy Bible. That's, uh, I believe it's second... <clears throat> Second Timothy three, yep, verse sixteen. It says, "All Scripture is given by inspiration of the Most High, and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness." You see, so we have the instruction and in righteousness right in our hands, but our people yet still want to follow it. That the man of the Most High may be perfect, duly furnished unto all good works. You see, in the men of the Lord right now, as we as you see. Are being refined. Okay. We are being refined. Um, so what did I wanted to get? Jeremiah 3 verse 14. Because as I said. I said. Our people yet. Want to. Uh, return back into Yahweh. You see. As it says here. It says. Uh, the only option is to separate ourselves from dependency on them. We must build communities of our own. Support our own. And love our own. No, what our people need to do is turn back to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. All right, Jeremiah 3, verse 14, it says, Turn a backsliding children, say of the Lord, for I will marry unto you, and I will take you one of a city and two of a family, and I will bring you to Zion. You see, so we have to turn from our wicked ways and return back to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. You see, that's what, we have, that's what our people need to do. That's what our people must do. Okay, our people have yet tried that. But we have already tried to 
build communities and do things like that. And guess what? The Lord brought all that down to the ground through Esau Edom. See, which is uh, uh which he's our whooping stick. You see? So this is what our people need to try. Okay, turn them back to your high Bashim Rashad. So Lord willing help this quick lesson was out of time out of fine. So next time I'm gonna say shot one.